Good morning. How are you feeling? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> oh, this is a very special year for us. And um, we are at this moment when uh, we are opening up the Conference of Italian Music Week and the brand new Creativity for Change Forum. And I have the honor and uh, joy to uh, present and ask on stage uh, the wonderful and really respected and beloved uh, President of Estonia, Thomas Ender Gilles. Well, good morning. Uh, I hope you weren't up too late last night. Or then again, I, I hope it was worth being up so late. In any case, I wanted to say that it's, uh, it's wonderful to be here at the uh, eighth Italian Music Week, uh, an event that has grown from its simple roots as a showcase for exciting but lesser known music in the Baltic region and beyond, uh, to an event that draws people from all over Europe and from North America and the further afield. A conference that brings together musicians and the recording industry is always something special in this world. But this year, uh, thanks to the great efforts of, of Helen Sildna, who has been involved in all kinds of broader projects for the last several years, uh, she has uh, come to the conclusion to, uh, to actually move beyond simply music, but so under the title Creativity for Change, uh, bring together people to go beyond simply music. Uh, but uh, telling music, even when it was dealing almost only with music, was something special. Uh, the first time I spoke here, I s spoke about Pussy Riot uh, that no one had ever heard of. It had just, they had just been arrested a week before. Um, and um, later on, they became quite well known. But uh, I just wanted to point out at that time that that uh, making music is not something that's always easy and comfortable, and can lead to all kinds of results. Uh, so, telling music has actually always been uh, inextricably tied to events around us. Well, this year, I would say even more so. Uh, and in many ways, because of uh, events around us in the past year or two, uh, that uh, it's, it's quite normal that we're moving beyond simply Italian Music Week to creativity for change. Um, because when we think about, when we, when we read the headlines, headlines about terrorism, growing populism, the rise of extremist parties in Europe and elsewhere, spewing language and simple solutions that just a few years ago would have led to their being shunned, if not ostracized, by the public at large, seems to have taken, sort of has become comme il faut, acceptable. We think, perhaps, some of us at least, that these things don't touch us or they touch us sort of in a vague way, or, or perhaps if someone knows someone who has been touched by these events. But in fact, to bring home to where we are and what, for example, the Italian Music Week public, is, I mean the people, you people, um, uh, <clears throat> are in relation to the world, there's a few people, and certainly not the broader media, actually noticed who was attacked in the Paris terrorist rampage in November. Perhaps some of you do. Uh, uh, we may recognize the name of the theater, the Bataclan. We perhaps read it was a rock band or a rock concert, but at best, most people thought, oh, well, it was an American band. But the band that played that night was one of the more alternative and out there bands making music today, the Eagles of Death Metal. Yet another creation of Josh Hom. How many people know who Josh Hom is here? Okay, good. Even, <clears throat> even the band's name is a postmodern is postmodern and ironic, referring to themselves as 
via the formulaic and rather bland country and western folk rock kind of 70s band, the Eagles, a uh, band that was already mocked for its blandness by Steely Dan in the middle of the 70s, turn up the music and put on the, or don't scream so loud, turn up the, put on the Eagles. Uh, that was about 35 years ago. Um, but it, uh, the name combining the bland uh, Eagles with the teenage primitive genre death metal uh, is actually a joke. Uh, nor is the joke hardly surprising, given that Josh Hom, who pushed the limits of modern rock with his Desert Sessions and other records, came to be known more broadly with an equally self-ironically named band, the Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, now, this self-mocking is part of the ethos of liberty, uh, that we don't take anything really that seriously, and all is ultimately open to being lampooned, even ourselves. In short, the people, those people, those 89 people who went to listen, who were killed, listening to this esoteric and little known band that is very much a part of alternative music culture uh, and who ended up being killed by terrorists were just like you and me. Well, maybe not like me because most people my age don't listen to this stuff, but I do. Uh, but people who listen to something other than what your average radio station would play. I would have gone to that concert had I been in Paris at that time, and I imagine many of you here at Tallinn Music Week would, uh, would as well. The point is that whom the terrorists targeted that terrible day were not the usual symbols. Uh, terrorists do try to pick out symbol, symbolic uh, targets. They were not governments, government officials, military installations. They targeted something that in many ways is a synecdoche, a part, uh, pars pro toto of liberal democracy, a musical audience that is irreverent, open to alternatives, hardly the mainstream or the uh, powers that be. Now, while Daesh or ISIS, or wh however we choose to name these murderers, elected to attack the vibrant cafes of Paris and an alternative music concert, we find that here in Europe and elsewhere, voices of reaction, simplistic demagogues, strengthened now by the horrific bombings in Brussels last week or a week and a half ago, are quick to take up a refrain little better than the Manichaean black-white world of the terrorists themselves. Let us not delude ourselves. The prejudiced, often a racist reaction that has been resurrected in Europe has no more tolerance for the liberal open spirit that allows us to play the music we want to play, listen to what we want to believe or not believe in what we want, the mentality of those people who attacked in Paris is not that different from the mentality of the people who today are speaking again in the tones of the 1930s. As much as it is fashionable to deride what we and our, pred more, our predecessors have achieved in Europe, the spirit of openness symbolized by open borders, freedom of expression, the rule of law, actually is an only a recent development. Here in Estonia and uh, across Eastern Europe, it is only a quarter century old. <clears throat> in Western Europe, liberal democracy is a little bit older than we think, or if you remember, or if we read in our history books. Uh, liberal democracy, freedom of speech as a general norm dates back really in Western Europe to the 1970s because up till then, Portugal, Spain, Greece, they were all under authoritarian rule. Now, while the UK has enjoyed its liberty for centuries, here on the continent, the, rec <clears throat> the record of liberal democracy is, uh, as any student of history knows, rather mixed. As a number of historians have pointed out over the years, we tend to believe that whatever present we live in will continue, that things won't change. That what we have today is what we just project from where we are today to 
the future, and maybe there'll be a faster and better iPhone, but nothing else will really change. Uh, but here in, 19, uh, here in this country, 77 years ago, uh, in, the, in the, the, the cafes and the salons of the, uh, you know, the progressive anti-establishment poets and artists of the time, no one really imagined that a year later we would be invaded and occupied by the Soviet Union and then invaded and occupied by the Nazis and then invaded and again by the Soviet Union. Uh, just as few people uh, imagined in the liberal, if not libertine, demimonde of Berlin in the 1930s that was described by Christopher Isherwood and who would later become the musical cabaret and also inspired Lou Reed's Berlin, uh, that all of that would shortly plunge into Nazi terror with concentration camps and all of the other horrors that we know about. Again, people could not imagine it. They thought that the kind of free and open spirit of Berlin in 1930-31 would continue, but it didn't. Now, I don't want to get all depressive on you here. I just think that what we see around us is dangerous. Now, the question is, how does this touch upon Italian Music Week? Well, I actually think quite directly. What this gathering represents is a coming together of people who want to discover what is new, no matter how irreverent or different it may be. People who know what freedom means, or if they don't, they should. Music, rock music, and as I repeatedly stress in my opening remarks here, over the years, each year, more or less the same refrain, uh, that it's a place that gathers together people who challenge the status quo, protests against the status quo, breaks boundaries, all the things you can do in a liberal democracy. Even if we say, oh, we're all apolitical, we don't want to deal with that stuff over there, we just want to do our thing and play our music or whatever we want to do, but, but in fact, all of that is enabled by living in free and open societies. What makes liberal democracies different from authoritarianism, be it of the Daesh variety or of the sort of uh, hard right that we see today all over Europe, is that democracies accommodate, adapt, absorb the challenges that people like you, one time me, uh, uh, pose. Uh, the liberal democracies change through cultural change. They become something new and different until, once again, they are challenged. What was once shocking becomes the norm. And then, after it becomes the norm, it becomes a joke. Uh, Elvis Presley's once censored pumping hips seem rather funny today, even though back in 1954, 55, you know, he was censored on television in the United States. Uh, you know, the Beatles' hair and later the concept um, album Sgt. Pepper's uh, that were once considered so revolutionary today are passe. I mean, who wants to listen to that? Uh, and the Rolling Stones sort of universal figure, street fighting man, finds himself a few years later as the German foreign minister and as head of the Greens, a coalition partner in the government. So you can see that things change and it, what is countercultural, anti uh, anti-government, anti um, in fact, then becomes the norm. Of course, it can also become the norm the other way. What may be alternative today is sort of crypto-fascist. So we have to think about these things. But what we see today, given the challenges of the rise of intolerance, anti-immigrant, anti-refugee slogans, um, is that governments alone are no longer capable of doing the job, not alone at least. Instead of leadership, we all too often see leaders, democratically elected leaders, have chosen to make, or that have been elected to make the tough decisions, shy away from them. And at the same time, extremist parties and politicians exploit the current refugee crisis like they exploited the economic crisis. They exploit the dissatisfaction of voters with the often anodyne and milk toast resolve of European leaders. Citizens, as citizens, we await decisive responses to crises. After all, that's why 
leaders were elected. When traditional parties do not provide the answer, they look, citizens look for those whose rhetoric sounds decisive, yet carries within it the so-called decisiveness of reaction, of simple, often rather un-European solutions that in fact, solutions that in fact the European Union was created to rid Europe of forever. We are, in short, in the situation that actually uh, William Butler Yeats described about 100 years ago, where the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Which brings me to why Italian Music Week is important to me, especially this year in its broader form, Creativity for Change. With musicians, yes, but also with many leaders in the tech world. This, by the way, if you don't know, uh, people still don't know, I found out yesterday. This is the home of Skype. We have the former CEO of Skype here. Um, it's the home of TransferWise, which is the only way to tra tra transfer money from one country to another these ways if you, without going broke. And also a host of uh, all other kinds of exciting startups. Um, but then again, we also have here people who have firsthand experience refugees themselves. We have Hamdi Urukaya here. We have startup guru Fadi Bishara from Syria, by the way, both refugees. And then we have, from the tech side, we have one of the geniuses of math education here, Conrad Wolfram. So what we have here today is a festival full of concerned citizens who care and who can offer innovative solutions at a time when it is no longer when, our, when governments across Europe no longer are doing the job because they need, they need our help. They do. Liberal democracy needs the help of people who don't want to see Europe turn into a reactionary, nationalist set of countries with, cold, with closed borders. Uh, basically, we don't want, I don't want, a return to the Europe of before 1939. If we want to keep this free and democratic Europe of ours, free and democratic, we must enlist ourselves, our skills, and our commitment to liberty and justice. The problems we face are too great to simply say, let the politicians do it. And I say this as president. We all need to help. We all need to use our creativity, be it musical, artistic, entrepreneurial, technological, to make a change for the better. It was actually, it's not that this is a new thing, which is not inconceivable. It was the same joining of musicians and artists and entrepreneurs and people from science and technology that liberated this country from totalitarian communist rule 25 years ago. People from all parts of society came together, and be it playing music, or writing, poetry, coming together to help out, develop new technologies to be able to do, to play music uh, for large audiences, because when uh, uh, we didn't really have the, um, the Soviets didn't allow people to do that, uh, they came together and did it, and I think that so too now. We should do it again. Certainly, what we face today is nothing like Soviet occupation here. And more broadly, not only here, but if a play li playwright like Václav Havel can liberate an entire country, certainly an army of creative people can save our Europe and our freedom. So it's up to you folks. Let's go. Thank you.